You're welcome back. We had to take that uh, uh, break for the news, and um, we're back to discussing what we were we started with mm. earlier on. We wanted to save the letter which is, we started this year, letter of, of Bassanjo, former president of Bassanjo, for last. But I guess kept uh, referring to it even uh, when yeah. it was not directly asked because it's like the most trending thing nowadays. Bio, you have read that letter. What was your general take on that letter? Um, very interesting letter. And like you said at the top of the program, um, at this time, the letter wasn't addressed to... Usually the letters have been addressed to a sitting president. Mm. Mm. But this time, the letter wasn't addressed to the current president. Uh, rather, the letter is addressed not even, okay, generally to Nigerians, but specifically to young Nigerians. Mm. And I thought that uh, President Obasanjo made a painstaking effort uh, to go back into history. Uh, I believe he recognizes that there's still a lot of the things that happened in history in our country that are influencing uh, current approaches and responses. And he, he made an attempt, in my view, to try to disconnect uh, without asking people to forget about those things. But he was saying, look, there has to be a point in our history where we move on and where we give people um, opportunities and chances based on their competence uh, especially in the political space, because this is done in the private sector, right? Mm. But in the political space, people often bring back everything that was said by somebody or done by somebody 30, 40, 50 years ago. And I think he was trying to, to get the younger generation to see things differently. And if I recall a phrase in the letter, he says, don't inherit your father's enemies. Yeah. Mm. Yes, that you was know, particularly. He said, you go and make your own friends. You, you, in other words, you take decisions based on your perception, you know, uh, your analysis and your perception, not because your father told you, don't talk to Bayo Loaki, <laughs> <laughs> or when you see Yambo coming, run away. <laughs> or anytime Uche is carrying a, a, a bag, there's a hammer inside. <laughs> so there you, must be. You know, yeah, yeah. Just, just evaluate things on your own their own merits. I think basically this is the core of that letter. And of course, it's geared towards getting people prepared to, to vote in the next election. Yeah, there, there, were, there was a particular place where he tried to tell the youths that you are not too young to vie. Mm. Uh, you are not too young to change the political landscape. You are not too young to take these decisions. Because he started mentioning where he, when he took power, he was in his 30s, and mm -hmm. he left power as a military administration, uh, administrator at 42. He started in his 30s, and at 42, he left. Then he came back as a civilian president, and when he got to about 60, he left. He left the political scene. So uh, he mentioned Go On. Mm -hmm. He mentioned a few other people that took the reins of power as very young individuals. So it is not something new that we even needed a bill for not too young to run because a lot of people have been at the helm of affairs at that young age. So what are the youths waiting for? But our concern right now is a lot of people are discrediting that letter. Not a lot of people. The, the parties concerned, especially the APC and then also the PDP, are now saying that Obasanjo doesn't have the moral compass, the moral standing, rather, to write such a letter that he's maybe suffering from amnesia or something. What is your own uh, say to that? Do you also feel that he cannot write a letter of that nature or he cannot advise the way he advised? Well, Uche and Yangu, you know that in politics, people will try to maximize what works for them. Exactly. And when it doesn't work for them, they try to discredit it. And I say that with all sense of responsibility. That's the nature of politics. Uh, first of all, if you recall that when the political parties had chosen their candidates, virtually all of them went to see President Obasanjo. Mm. You know, um, I... 
you, you even you 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 could see that they went to see him because they believe that he counts for something. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, otherwise they wouldn't have gone to see him. Uh, secondly, um, he is not just. I think increasingly in the country, he has his own following. You know, uh, and and his following is especially where it matters. You know, the, the political elite. Uh, the same police, some of the political elite are discrediting his letter now, but a large, you remember when the central bank announced that they were going to redesign the Naira? Yeah. Uh, every single major political party said the passenger should be on one of the Naira notes. Mm. <laughs> I, I hope you can recall yes, that, yes, yes, okay. that discussion. So, okay, so if he doesn't have the weight, or if he doesn't have the, why, why, why would they be saying that? You know, uh, thirdly, internationally, Obasanjo is reckoned with. And, uh, you know, any political figure in Nigeria who, on, who you know, tries to diminish Obasanjo's clout internationally is not going to have it easy because he has the heirs of key, key, key leaders in the world. He has their heirs. So, uh, Having said all of that, I think, yes, he's just one person. He's just expressing his opinion. And um, I, I, I share the view of uh, Dr. Omoshola Deji, who uh, our guest today, who said, look, it should have done better to just say, sir, we respect you, we're entitled to your opinion. And you just move on. You know, not, not start trying to dismantle the argument he made in his letter. Because I think that Basically, what he's saying, and many people in Nigeria will agree in principle that we need to move forward and we need to make new friends and we need to keep history to guide us, but not to always let that history determine what we do. In any society, this would be the general philosophy. And I think that's what he was trying to say. But perhaps there's this strident resistance because that letter, whether we like it or not, has also tended towards endorsing one candidate. And I think that is actually the issue. <laughs> not not everything else, you know, which is contained in it. I see that. But even the... Okay. I, I, I totally want to agree with by You know, the letter is generally uh, geared towards moving forward. You, you know, in one of the paragraphs, he mentioned how that the three uh, major candidates had come to visit him. Mm. And for every one of them that had come to visit him, they had said they want to bring Nigeria to the point where he was at when he was president from 1999. Mm. And he was of the opinion that he doesn't think Nigeria needs to go back to where it was by 1999. We should be moving forward. And even if he wanted to take it back to then, the population is no longer the same. Technology has changed. There's been a lot of movement towards the future. We should be looking at how to meet up with the people in the more developed climes. And that was very exciting for me. And also to drive on the point where, uh, that I said about you know, him looking forwards, uh, he also mentioned how that the youth are not too young to run. Uh, uh, that is a bit controversial for me because... He was president for eight years, mm. and he took another president to come and, you know, bring the bill of the not too young to run and pass it into law. Uh, why I say that that is a bit controversial for me is because there's a lot of talk around it. People has, have politicized that statement, that bill. It is now a point that people, a switch that people turn on when they want to get the votes and the consideration and the love of the younger Nigerians. But as well, that is okay. It's also politics <laughs> that is playing around with stuff. But then, moving Nigeria forward is beyond one man. And he also made sure that he mentioned that. And that, therefore, encouraging young Nigerians to use the power that is already in their hands. One of the paragraphs, he also, also mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Use the power that is already in your hands. If no one has said it, I'm saying it today as a representative of the young Nigerians. These men, these older people who claim to be, you know, clenching so strongly to Nigerian political power are actually afraid of what we have to offer. I mean, by us, by what we 
uh, what, what I mean by that is the young people, what we have to offer in the forthcoming 2023. Unfortunately, that is something that a man like Obasanjo has come to realize and he's writing about it. And these people vying for presidency, I mean, the three uh, major candidates, except, of course, for people who has come out rightly to show their uh, alliance with the young population of Nigeria, but no other presidential candidate has actually shown that alliance with the young Nigerians. And then we still claim that we are the future of the country, and the young Nigerians or uh, the youth are the, the future. When the future is now, it has started. How many young persons are in your campaign organization? How many young persons are you considering to work with in the future? How many young persons have come to you for help in one way or another in their political aspirations? Have you helped? How many young persons are in your whatever? Yes. Yeah, but you know, there are a lot of young persons in their political campaigns, trust me. But the young how many, no, no, how, many, me. how many, I'm sorry, how many of these young persons hold... Um, are, are in the position where they can thwart beautiful. and change position. That beautiful, is the point. So you you, 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 you the, keep the point? young people, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> you keep young people in a place that is able to earn you the favor of whoever else is following exactly. this person. But not enough to give the person the power to make changes, to grow, to actually get to the point where you are. That doesn't, that, that doesn't sit well. That doesn't sit well at yeah. all. And, and, and until we begin to realize, I'm talking to everybody now, we begin to realize, and as young pe people, it's enough to have people speaking for us and saying, give young people the chance. Do you have your PVC as a young person? <laughs> have you done your own personal analysis? Have you done your own personal research to find out who I should actually really vote? Apart from all the shenanigans that is going on right now, these are questions we <laughs> need to answer personally for ourselves. Yeah, like I was saying, there are a lot of people, young people in their campaign trail. But like you said, how many are in the position of significance? Because a lot of these media gurus, media, media army men, <laughs> I would say, <laughs> that are doing a lot of things in the, in the social media and all that, uh, discrediting one person, lifting another person, I'm sure all of them are youths. But is that the position that there will be to change the, the fortunes of Nigeria, just staying behind the computer and responding to tweets here and there and all that? The youths will have to take a more significant responsibility. But beyond getting the PVCs, the youths, are you ready mm. to get into that position and do the needful? Like now, Basanjo has said that when, when he came into power for the first time, all of them were young. You know, you know. So the question is, were they ready or not? That means they were ready. So one thing is to be given the chance. The second thing is to be ready to take up the responsibility. That's, that's, that's very key to me. So well, When this conversation was to come up earlier, beginning of the program, you said if we start, it will not finish. <laughs> but now we really need to go. <laughs> we have and to it's go. really not Bye, finishing. Just give us a final word. Um, let's, let's, let's move on. The letter has been written. We have heard all that the submission of the former uh, president of Nigeria. Uh, a final word from you to everybody in Nigeria. I think, I think the political elites who are opposed to the letter need to remember something. This country is 206 million people, and 70% of 206 million people are below the age of 30. So before you start uh, dismissing or not agreeing with what the former president has said, which is mainly focused on young people, remember that demographic. And these people might actually determine who becomes the next president. Thank you very much, Bio. This is where we draw the curtain. Uh, thank you for being a part of the show. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And my name is Uchechuku Onodo.